If your home was on fire, what's the one thing that you would rush in to pull out? <laughs> well, I never graduated from college, so for me, that would be our family photo albums. Because we spend a lot of time in putting those together so that we can hand it down to our children, and we can, those can be handed down to their children. Now, a fire may not destroy your family records, but there's one thing that definitely will, because it destroys everything and that's time. Now, we don't have very many options to choose from from what we could put our history on that's very durable and long-lasting. We have paper, microfilm, digital, and maybe stone if you like to chisel. <laughs> paper can survive for about 300 years, maybe, and it's very delicate. Microfilm is a much better choice. That can survive for about 500 years, and some say 1,000, but that's also delicate. And digital, everybody's now digitizing their family records. This is probably the worst, because that can survive for about five years. Because every five years, you have to take your information and migrate it from the old format into the most current format. <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's not very practical. So I work with a company called Nano Rosetta, and we've been thinking about these kinds of things for the past 10 years. And our approach is to produce something incredibly simple and elemental so that it stands a chance of surviving that long. All we do is produce a nickel disc. It's about this size, about the size of a CD and just about as thin. Just a nickel disc. And we use very fast, very precise lasers to etch information onto that nickel disc. Under a microscope, these etchings look black. The rest of the area is white. So we can use them as pixels to produce images in black and white and grayscale. We also work very small, kind of like microfilm except smaller at the nano scale, so that we can print the entire King James Bible, about 800 pages of text, on an area smaller than the size of a dime. And again, all that is is a piece of nickel with pieces of nickel missing. And this is one of the pages up close. Looks just like a page from a book. And this is one of the photos I'm compiling of my mother. And what's amazing about this photo and this printing of the King James Bible isn't just that the nickel is so durable it can survive a fire or a flood or a highly corrosive environment or even an electromagnetic pulse because it's not a computer. It's that it can do all of that and survive for over 10,000 years. So that I, could, that I could hand this photo album of my mother down to my children, who can hand it down to their children, who can hand it down to their children, 300 times so that they'll never forget who they are and where they come from, and the fact that my mom used to play on the Czechoslovakian national soccer team in the 1970s, <laughs> and that she drove cars on two wheels professionally. <laughs> Brought home the bacon, I guess. <laughs> 10,000 years. That's such a huge number, and to us, it means just about nothing. So what I'd like you to do is to think about where your family was 10,000 years ago. <laughs> what were they doing? That was the Neolithic period, about 8,000 BC. So they were probably still painting in caves and trying to figure out how to create a society based on agriculture. Now think about how much has happened since then. Just about everything we know is human history. And how much more will happen in the next 10,000 years. Now back then, a lot of that information was lost. Think about how much information has been lost. How many libraries of Alexandria are just gone? Now, what's amazing about this technology is that it allows us, for the first time in human history, to archive our information exactly the way we intend it to be read 10,000 years from now, so that no longer will they have to piece together fragments of our culture to create a narrative for us and about us. We can tell them exactly who we are in our own hand. So it allows us to ask this question, in a very real way. Who are we? What kind of stories do we even have to tell that can survive that long? The Long Now Foundation in San Francisco has one answer to that. About 10 years ago, they wanted to print and archive all human written languages for the next 10,000 years. They compiled 13,000 pages of text, about 1,500 languages worth, and we printed it for them. 
on a nickel disc that can fit into the palm of your hand. Now back then, it took us about three minutes per page to write. Today, we've dropped that time down to eight to 10 pages per second. So we're able to handle much larger projects. Very soon, we're going to be crowdfunding a project to print and archive the entire human genome, every A, T, C, and G that makes you you and not a squirrel. <laughs> and it's massive. The only time it's ever been attempted to print on paper is to show how ridiculous a task it is to print on paper. <laughs> In four-point font, just about the smallest you can really manage, if you laid out each page side by side, it would cover three quarters of a football field. And we're able to do that same amount of information on three to four CD-sized disks. And very recently, this project got a little bit bigger than us. Carnegie Mellon University has offered to help, and they have a space program. They're participating in the Lunar X Prize by Google to send a rover to the moon. And they've made some space on that rover for these very special disks. So in the year 2015, these disks will be shot to the moon, turning this 10,000-year archiving project into a one billion year archiving project. So 10,000 years is hard to explain, but I have absolutely no metric for a billion years. Our universe is only 14 billion years old. So what I'd like you to do is to think about where your family was one billion years ago. <laughs> what kind of primordial soup were they? Anyway, so this is a crowdfunded project and we will be rewarding our backers by printing their images into one of the disks. So over here, we'll have the one anonymous archetypal human genome, and over here, we'll have many of the images of the possible permutations of the faces this human genome can make. I'm actually curious about what people will choose to make immortal. This is mine. Because I think sarcasm and hyperbole <laughs> will never die. And it actually won't. <laughs> so after this project, we're going to be looking at doing an even larger project. It's so massive that nobody has even attempted to print it as a stunt. And Wikipedia itself estimates that to print all 4.3 million English-based articles, it would require bound, it would require 15 bookshelves to hold it. We're able to do that same amount of material on a stack of nickel disks less than a foot high. It's over there in the bottom left-hand corner. It's about this high. And because of the technology we're using, we're, we're able to make multiple copies very easily without setting up whole new projects. So multiple locations could house many different Wikipedias. So these are just a few examples of some of the things that may be worth preserving for a long time. But if it were up to you, what kind of information what kind of an impression would you want to leave somebody 10,000 years from now? Would it be pictures of yourself and of your family? Would it be bigger projects like this? With this technology, we're, we can do this. But perhaps more interestingly, what it allows us to do is today to ask the question in a very real way, who are we and what do we value? <laughs>